absolutely positive you're alone in your house, correct? You ain't got like a yes, I'm alone in the house. <laughs> I have anger problems. I don't know about y'all, but I'd be ready to knock a nigga out. Like, I go from zero to a hundred real quick. I gotta constantly contain myself just so I won't explode. I like that. Don't mind at the gutter. Before I started my journey on mastering my anger issues, I wasn't on Black Air Force time. On Kami, I was on Black Timberland time. I ain't gonna sit here and act like I've always been the victim. Sometimes I've been the aggressor. They got these paws because they kept talking with them jaws. Oh, most of the time it was due to the fact that I either misinterpreted what they said or I just did too much in my temper. I remember a couple years ago when I used to live with my parents. I remember this one day, I brought the squad over to chill, and things went completely left. We were all upstairs, sitting around, chilling, shooting the pool. Next thing I know, me and my brother get into art. I'm going to try to piece together this whole situation so it can make sense. This is basically how it went. Back then, me and these two were trying to make an anime originally by ourselves. Like, no animation company, no nothing. We're amateurs. We were in the process of making a trailer for the anime, right? And I was the only animator. And this was around the time where I wasn't an established creator like now. I was Devante, not yet the one. I'm talking about this is before I did animation. Like, this was my rookie year of animation. This was when, back when I was doing reactions, skits, my fucking music videos, all that. I just only dabbled with animation every now and then. Just to, like, learn how to actually do it. Because I didn't know how to, like, do it for real. So with me being a rookie, I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. I traced the entire trailer, literally the entire thing, for 10 I traced that shit, because I honestly thought back then that it was okay to do that. No, 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 big dog. Let's put a pin in that, come back to that later, slide it to the side. The problem here was, is that he used that as fuel to downplay my work ethic when it came to my content creation, which I've been doing since 2010. And you, bro, if anybody knows me, they know I don't play about my content creation crap, bro. This is what I love to do. This is what I live for. I eat, sleep, breathe content creation, bro. I'm a lion. When you come in my den, the grind don't stop. It don't matter what the opponent is. We will triumph. I went many days hungry, sleepy. Nigga, I had no energy whatsoever. Brain fried just to push out videos that weren't even that good in my eyes now, but they were the shit. Than me. So when somebody tries to make the assumption that my work ethic is the same for everything I do based on a side project that I wasn't really even like taking serious or even caring about for real, then it pisses me off. Like you can't mix the two. So when he started downplaying my work ethic on my content creation because of the trailer, he got me so mad to the point where I stopped listening to logic and reasoning all together. Like he was just telling his opinion, but it's the way that he said it. He made me feel like I was a lesser being because of, I did, like I did what I did. Like come, come on, bro. And no, he did harder than me. I've been in the trenches since 2010, and I never gave up. Like dude, watch your mouth. This was a side project. Don't make me get my spray. Where my spray bottle at? Poison. Let's head home. Head to bed. You know the usual shit. Thank <laughs> you. 
Shit. back up, head to bed, you know, the usual shit. Hey boss, hey boss, hey. Welcome back up. <laughs> gang gang. Crip gang. Head to bed. Have in the morning. Crip gang you heard. I cannot wait until I'm out of the simulation. <laughs> until I break free of the simulation currently. People need to wake the fuck up. This place is not real. It's a simulation. Let's go. Go chill down somewhere around here. Crip gang. Football field should be somewhere around here, where me and my mum fucked yesterday. <laughs> we fucked that in public. Yo, let's park this here. Two is pocket puffoy. You know what, screw it. Pocket up this shit. Welcome back up.
Let's go tear down here now. Go tell here. Press play. Smoke a bomb for the day. Boiling. So on um, Kami, I get active. Like, what's your tone when you're talking to Big Mellow in this mug, girl? I get about my chair and I blow up on him. Mind you, this is my older brother, but he's skinny compared to me. Like, I, I'm, I'm fresh off of football. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm
to work on my anger. That's why I smile a lot these days. I've been working on it for the past five years. I've been doing pretty good, I, I, I guess. Sometimes I fold these days, you know, I'm human. It's gonna happen. It's not like I got ultra instinct, you know, I just stay calm all the time. I'm not weak, you know. My anger ain't like it used to be, but it's still present. I don't just go from zero to 100 now. It's more of a gradual thing nowadays. You know, I, I'm working on it. So my brother, I'm sorry. All you had to do was just keep my work ethics name out your freaking mouth. Oh. I like big mess. Hey. I like chicken wings. Uh huh. Give me them butter biscuits, dude. Cause it's tasty. Ah. Give me them fries. Uh. Give me that nine. Uh huh. I, I don't get tired. Uh huh. I'm fit for greatness. Hey. I look back up. She's already at my desk. I'm decided to not re-upload to this new channel. Instead, I decided to remake it. <coughs> As I was saying, growing up, I was the type of person that wasn't rebellious unless necessary. If the situation called for me to be rebellious, then I'm jumping to the gun. No hesitation. Boom! Splat! Reload! There have been many times in my about to be 23 years in November on this planet that I had no choice for it to be this way. One time my dad threatened to take my check my hard-earned check that I slaved over for weeks and my 9 to 5 back when I was 19 over some dumb shit. I told him to eat a dick. Well, I didn't tell him to eat a dick, but that's what I was in my head when I didn't give him the check. Because I didn't want to end up in a casket floating down a river somewhere. Like, y'all ever had somebody try to take money from you? You feel violated. People do not play about money. Like, have you seen Family Guy? I ain't trying to end up like Brian. You know what Stewie did? Huh? Like, who the fuck you think you is trying to take my money? Like, you weren't in the back slaving customers and getting threatened by your boss and getting rolled up by your shift manager and dealing with your co-workers not wanting to work and having to keep a smile on your face while you deal with customers that want to take your head off because you got the order wrong like what, what, uh, we, we getting off track anywho my parents they always raised me to listen to higher authority and follow rules and regulations because they're there for a reason however comma me i had a threshold i'm gonna listen to you until you break that threshold and it's always for a reason for example Devonte, go do the dishes. It's disgusting in there. Ma, there's literally one dish. I, 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 I don't need the lip. Just do them. Yes, ma'am. Devonte, go fight that lion. Oh. Talking about me? Yes. You. You want me to go fight? I don't need the lip. Just go do I, Like I said, it's always for a reason. I remember this one day, five years ago in my senior year of high school, something happened in math class that broke that threshold. I decided to go to school that day with pants with little pockets. And I don't know if y'all know about pants with little pockets, but they have stuff fall out easily whenever you sit down anywhere. You know, I was walking around with little midget pockets, but it's okay, because I was fresh to death. You know, ain't nobody don't help me. I'm just so fresh, so, so fresh and so clean. Man, I was, I was on my P's and Q's, you dig? I was keeping it together all day. Phone falling out, pencils falling out, everything. The only thing that didn't fall out was the rubber. I get to math class, my teacher, we're gonna call her, I don't wanna use her real name, we're gonna call her Karen, big booty white lady. She had that thing, thing in every class. Every time she turned around, we saw all the assets. Only problem I had with her is that she was so fucking annoying. Come to the board, three plus four. Uh, baby, listen, <laughs> do you realize if I come to the board, something might poke you? And I ain't talking pencils. Always showing us her kids and stuff like we care. Like, look, do you want another one? We had a test that day, and she told everybody before the test to put your phones away. And if she sees it or hears it, she's going to take it up. Now, the smart thing to do in this situation is to put my phone on silent and put it in my bag. What did I do? Push it. Let's head back to the crib. Head to bed, wake up in the morning, the usual shit. <laughs> the usual shit, cunt. I'm okay.
Mapi ka no wang wai. This I can. Bye school. See you later, I shall school. <laughs> Fuck school. See y'all when I'm back at the house. Shit. Inside, head to bed, wake up in the morning, work school. Hey boys, hey boss, hey guys, walk it back up. <coughs> head to my room, my room is over here. Close my room, head to bed, seven in the morning. I rock it. I mean, close it. I rock it. You know what I mean, can? Let's go chill outside on the balcony here. A balcony. Push play. No, the opposite. I kept it in my midget pocket pants. Have I decided to take the risk of leaving my phone in my pants because I didn't plan on moving a lot anyway. I was trying to cheat. Not because my whole class was doing it. I did it of my own accord. I wasn't ready for this test and I wasn't ready to fail. And I don't know if you noticed, know but cheating requires you to move a little bit. Whether you writing notes down on your arm, writing on the desk and covering it with the test paper, blocking your phone with your legs so you can use Quizlet or Google, anything of that nature. Good yeah, day. A a bit, the day. You know what I mean, guys. So we start the test, and as suspected, I was struggling to keep this phone in my pocket while taking the test. So I was like, I right, okay, back it up, pickup truck, put the keys out the ignition, throw them on the floor. Let me push this phone as deep as possible inside of these midget pockets as I can so it won't fall out. That didn't last long because one of my peers right next to me, he turns to me and he's like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Toss me one of those answers, holla at me. And my first instinct was to turn slightly to his direction. And that's what screwed me over. Because as soon as I turn slightly to his direction, up. the phone falls out. I'm like, oh shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> as soon as the phone fell on the floor, I turned my head to Karen and the look on her face told me everything. I'm like, oh shit. I turned to pick my phone off the floor. I look back up. She's already at my desk. I'm like, how the, huh? She looked me dead in my soul and was like, uh-uh, don't hide it. Give it to me. Did you pay for this? I ain't running you this phone till you run me a check. Hello, this is your service provider. How may I assist you? Did she pay for this phone? Hail to the no. That's what I thought. Now before I lose my patience, I'm going to ask you kindly to build a bridge and walk the other direction. Okay, I didn't say all that. <laughs> I said that all in my mind. However, comma, I did say no to her. And she was shocked as if she just assumed I was going to automatically cooperate because of fear. No, baby. I'm the brave and the bold. I had two options. Either give her the phone and have my parents come pick it up after school or keep the phone, go to ISS, and still have my parents told about the situation. So basically, this whole ultimatum was a double-edged sword. I was going to get cut either way. I was like, F it. You know what? I'm going to go with the second option because of two reasons. One, I needed my phone for work, which I had to go to right after school ended. And two, I didn't want
want my mom or dad to take off work and drag their behinds down to the school over something that could have been avoided. Because like I said, it was a double-edged sword. She sent me to the office. My mom chewed me out because I had to listen to authority when I didn't. I got in trouble regardless. Thanks, Karen. Ah! Oh. <laughs> DoorDash, Uber Eats, Instacart, Postmates. Don't let the gym videos fool you. This barbell ain't the only thing with two on it. Like, the only hub in my search history is Grubhub. No cap, I put that on my browsers account. I say this besides how avid of a user of these delivery apps I am. The only person I can think of that uses these apps more than me is my boy Cheerio, but he doesn't use them for the of these delivery apps I am. The only person I can think of that uses these apps more than me is my boy Cheerio, but he doesn't use them for the reason that you think. He doesn't order food. He delivers it. I know this because the last animation I uploaded was made almost entirely in his car off of my laptop because I decided to ride shotgun with him while he worked to see what it would be like to be a DoorDash. What about that? Damn! And it was an experience. I'll, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Honestly, I'm surprised I'm even alive to animate this because not only does Cheerio drive mad reckless, he also drives sticks, so when he's not cutting people off and hitting U-turns at 30 miles per hour, he's switching gears hard as hell, like bro's car jerks more than me on a Saturday night, and that's saying something. Because I practice this dance all the time, like this is the only jerk, and I've been doing it for months, I put that on my browsers, and Cheerio will be with me, bro. The only thing that can stop this nigga is a blue shell, like calm down, Don Toretto, you're gonna be Paul walking to the gates of heaven if you keep this up. I'm really not trying to make this whole video about his driving thing. But he literally turned his car off at 45 miles per hour on a hill and turned it back on when he had to steer at the bottom just to save gas. I mean, I understand because with these gas prices, I bet he'd rather be delivering kilos than food. But golly, was risking my life worth the 35 cent? Yes. Despite Cheerio driving like he has five stars on GCA, he actually has the same rating on DoorDash. He gets great reviews and he 100% does not deserve these ratings. My literal first impression of dashing with him went like this. Pull up to this jack-in-the-box to pick up an order. We stop at the window. He grabs, like, five bags of food and puts it in the back. I'm thinking we're going to drive off after this, but then I hear... Hey, yo, yo, put, put this on your lap for me, bro. I look up, and he's handing me, like, four more bags of food. That's nine bags. They gonna place this order? I take my headphones off and ask him why he picked up so much food, and he tells me he does Uber Eats and DoorDash and accepted four orders, not realizing how much food each person got. But he didn't seem too worried. That was until he confirmed the pickups and got the locations for the deliveries. Come to find out, both the Uber Eats and the DoorDash delivery are opposite sides of town, which is a problem because you get in trouble if you don't make deliveries in a certain amount of time. And it would be literally impossible to drive one side of town and back to the other in 30 minutes. But, you know, that obviously doesn't stop Cheerio from trying. So two spin-ups, three risky lane changes, 110 miles an hour, and 15 minutes later, we pull up to the first delivery and he drops off the food. And we're good. But with 15 minutes on the clock and a 20 minute ride ahead of us not including traffic it was not looking good for us but you know that didn't stop cheerio from trying so three ran red lights four close calls with cops and one spilled doordash order and we make our way onto the home oh my god the turbulence of the car tips over this one large cup of water and i am just watching as this one guy's food gets drenched and soggy but what cheerio says next it's what makes me realize this dude does not deserve the rating. Because he, with the most desperate of tones, says, Hey, yo, 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 please be quick. Put the food in that bag. I'll tie it. My dog, is delivering a baptized meal really worth the $7 fare? Yes. Wow. This is actually happening. This dude just got water all over his order. And instead of canceling it, he tells me to put it in a... Yo, yo, stop the monologue, nigga, and bag the food. You know how me get the... No. So with my bare hands, I'm grabbing soggy fries, <laughs> reassembling the burger, Cheerio speeding, the paper bag is reading Psalms 23. It's straight pandemonium in this whip right now. But finally, I get everything tied up, and right as we're about to exit the highway, Cheerio gets a notification from DoorDash. Turns out the guy actually cancels his order. And now that I think about it, if I ordered something on DoorDash and saw my driver go in the literal opposite direction, stop, and then head back my way... I canceled too, so luckily we never delivered the food, but the fact that we were about to drop this off 
at someone's door is ridiculous. Luckily for us and not the other guy, it freed up some time for us to make the last delivery room, right as the time was about to end as well. So like, it was mad clutch. We pull up and a rush Cheerio parks his car and looks into the destination. Unbeknownst to me, this dude just parked in the middle of the street. The only reason I realized this is because I'm blinded by the sight of high beams frantically flashing in front of me. In a panic, I get out and get into the driver's seat, but I forgot this nigga drives stick. But I can't just let this dude see me get into the front seat just to not move the whip. I come up on the brake, but I see three pedals. I go to grab the gear, and I don't see an arm anyway. Who pull drive is like this? I am sweating in this seat, and then this guy starts honking his horn. Something needs to be done. I gotta just move here, step on any of these three pedals, or all three of them at the same time, and just hope that the car goes backwards. I genuinely see no other way out of this, so I build up the courage to move the gear. I grab it, but... Thankfully, Cheerio makes it back in time, and his timing could not have been better because I was dead two seconds away from crashing his car or messing up the engine. Either way, it would have been a quiet ride home. <coughs> <coughs> Seven in the morning. <laughs> Damn. Can't wait until we're out. Till the simulation is no more. <laughs> Welcome back up. Let's go. Welcome back up. Let's go chill. Around the back. <laughs> Around here. Why not? Here we do come. Plus pie. Every time I went, but it wasn't always his fault, though. If it wasn't Cheerio making dumb decisions, it's the restaurants, bro. I remember this one time Cheerio's DoorDash card didn't work for an order, and the guy asked him if he could pay for it. Like, you asking me for bread? <laughs> These niggas. When I press, you don't shift because I'm in control when I see niggas. I'm gonna really empty out my clip door, and you ain't come out. Just like us.
Advertising on YouTube helps me reach engaged customers like Jenna, who's been searching for landscapers on Google. So, hey, before we start this video, I would like to give a huge shout out to the sponsors of this video. My boys over at Manscaped. Manscaped. Thank you, Griffey. They said that's it. Fuck off. No one cares about our fucking sponsors. I'm here to watch your videos, not sponsors or ads. Some people might, but I don't. Uh, I'm trying to go to work today. It's just six hours, Jojo. That's two hours, three times. What's the What's the worst that can happen? Do you have this in the back? I know. We actually just cleared the back. Go check for me. Don't come on my line. 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 Hey, yo, yo. So Amy just called in sick. I'm, uh, I'm going to need you to work her. But I'm working this register. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how's it going? How may I help you today? Have a bond. Oh, I'm quitting. Oh, no, 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 I'm quitting. I'm quitting. No, no, I'm quitting. Do you have this in the back? So I'm just going to talk about the stuff that used to annoy me when I was working a 9 to 5. You know, shoplifters, Karen, young boy fans, rowdy kids, clumsy people, shoplifters. <laughs> Like, I don't get it. Who goes into an establishment just to be obnoxious? Like, who could get me to do that? Zoe Kravitz herself could tell me to shoplift, but I just have too much respect for retail workers to do so. Ah. It doesn't even have to be obnoxious people for real, because time? Fuck that nigga. Why does my break go by so fast, but when I'm on the clock, it feels like I am in the hyperbolic time chamber. Like, I'm here to bag groceries, not unlock Super Saiyan 2, man. I used to... Man, I used to work for three hours without looking at the clock in hopes of seven hours to go by just to check the time and see that it's only been 15 minutes. But if it isn't the clock's hands moving slower than dead sheets, it's the manager's bro. Oh, holy. You either have a cool manager or a manager that yells at you for being late. Like, there's no in between. Like, cops can literally get caught on video putting five in someone's back. What I mean? What I mean? He's one shot. He's one shot. He's one shot. Rush, rush. And get paid leave. But let me show up five <laughs> minutes late and they tell me to leave. Like, fine. I didn't want to work here in the first place. Saying I don't fit in with your company's morals. Like, how would you fit these and you cap to get me to take the job in the first place? Managers be catfishing niggas into these jobs. Like, don't try to gas up this indentured servant as specific. Don't want 40 hours of my time, no breaks in 715 an hour. Like this contract really looking like the three fifths compromise for real. Like, put your hand down. Yeah, I'm not your man. If you keep talking, you will get Chris Rock because I got hands. Knock your head off your body so high that even Alice gonna wonder where it lands. 20k a year and 40 hours a week is crazy. And then they try to gas up the work environment too. Okay, before we start the hiring process, I'd like to let you know some things about us here. First, our staff is very hardworking and honest. So you said you want a milkshake? I well, our ice cream machine is actually broken right now. And we're also not taking car payment. We prioritize your needs as a valued employee. Hey, can I take my lunch break? No. It's a little fast-paced, but still fair and reasonable. Yo, yo! Why is there no chicken in the fryer? Your bathroom has been dirty for hours, and I need this trash taken out now. What have you been doing this whole time? Just clocked in. And above all, we respect your schedule. Hey, can I have next Saturday off? No. Co-workers can get it too, especially the person who steals food. Like, bro, we both work the same 40 hours. Like, I see you buying LED lights for your Ultima. You really spending food money just to make your car look like it has 64 gigabytes of RAM. And then there's the old co-workers who, for some reason, have more work ethic than everyone in the building. Like, bro, I mean, sir, you're three business days away from being sent to God's recently deleted, and you're over here doing more work than me. You're 80 trying to get promoted to corporate. You're gonna be in a box before before you get your box office, no cap. But the worst coworker of them all is the regular employee who acts like he's a manager. Like this establishment is paying you seven fifteen to work forty hours, and to suck them off. Like you're a trooper for real. Like nothing could make me work like that. Just like 
just want to give a huge shout out to Stanley Animations and Devontae the One for hopping in this video. Like me and Devontae made part one of this story like two years ago. That being said, Devontae is currently being done like very dirty by YouTube.